Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabans. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment. And we give you guys a fresh perspective on things. And uh, we see them. And today we have a very interesting, so interesting show in store for you guys. But before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. So let's get into this topic here. We're still talking about uh, Skip Bayless, right? A lot of people have various things to say about him. Yesterday, <clears throat> a lot of us were reacting to the news. A former NFL, I think, Hall of Famer, um, ESPN FS1 analyst uh, Chris Carter essentially coming out uh, and describing the some of the contentious moments he had with Skip Bayless when he was on the set with him on first take how he basically told him dur during a commercial break if you ever disrespect me like that again <clears throat> I'm going to knock you upside the head right uh, a lot of people uh, reacted to that a lot of people have been reacting to the news of Skip Bayless being let go uh, by FS1 after eight years at the network. And what has surprised me in all of this are some of Skip's contemporaries, some of some of the people that have been on television that have worked in sports media. A lot of them uh, have been coming out talking about Skip and they haven't been saying really positive things, right? Which kind of speaks to Skip's reputation. If you think of people like Dan Levitard, uh, Marcellus Wiley, Chris Carter, uh, and, a, and a range of others, uh, a lot of people have not come to the defense of Skip Bayless. So what happened yesterday? I came across a segment from Jason Whitlock's channel uh, where they were talking about this very thing. So when I initially clicked on the show, I was expecting to hear, um, uh, what is it, Jason Whitlock, you know, basically delve into what happened at, you know, what happened at uh, FS1 with Skip being fired and, you know, the news surrounding that. But things played out a little bit differently. In fact, when he presented the question to the audience or the topic to the audience, it was his regular guest, Steve Kim, that actually came on and started talking about it. And as he was talking about Skip, he brought up a lot of um, interesting points. And Jason Whitlock came in towards the tail end to kind of give his thoughts and opinions on that. And I thought they had a pretty insightful a breakdown of the Skip Bayless situation there. So before we get into their comments, today's video is brought to you by our sponsor, Prize Picks, which is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Prize Picks is really simple. Instead of just selecting a team, you just select two or more players, pick more or less their projected stats, and then you place your entry. For example, this week, I'm selecting two entries, Stephen Curry for more than 25 points, and then I got Anthony Davis for more than two blocks, and Damian Lillard for more, for more than four three-pointers made. Price Picks is also the only daily sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So for example, if you have a player who gets injured in the first half and doesn't return to the second half, that player gets automatically rebooted. What I also love about Price Picks is that it offers weekly promotions like Taco Tuesdays. Each Tuesday, Price Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. So go to pricepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit matchup up to $100. That's go to pricepick.com slash CLNS, use code CLNS for a first deposit match to, of up to $100. And remember, whenever you support this sponsor, you're supporting this channel. Thank you. So what we would like to do now is we'd like to play exactly what Steve Kim and Jason Whitlock had to say about Skip Bayless, um, you know, leaving FS1 and his refusal, right? His refusal uh, to really work things out and work things out with the network in terms of having a farewell speech and his anger towards FS1 for the friction that existed between himself and Shannon Sharp. Take a listen to what they had to say here. Uh, before I let you go, I want to uh, get your thoughts on uh, you know Skip Bayless, his final day mm. on Undisputed was uh, last Friday. Steve, he did not say a farewell on air. Uh, he did not his address his departure on air. Uh, my understanding is that uh, the executives and the people at Fox wanted him to address his departure on air. He refused. Uh, because he's angry at them, and he blames them for uh, not negotiating peace between Skip and Shannon Sharp. Mm. He's now blaming the executives at Fox Sports uh, rather than perhaps himself. And, and so he wouldn't yeah. address his departure on air. He put out a tweet shortly after leaving the air saying that you know, that was his final day, and he's 
on to bigger and better things. Uh, two questions here. Do you like the way he exited and is Skip Bayless's television career over? Skip Bayless is a Sinatra. He's going to do it his way. So it, in that sense, I guess I respect it. But let's go back to what you said. He should not be blaming the executives for not brokering peace with Shannon Sharp. Here's what he should have done if he really cherished that relationship. And he understood that there was a certain chemistry that they developed. How about just treating your partner better to a point where he does not want to walk off? Some of those exchanges, especially the one where he said, you're not Tom Brady and put your glasses back on. You know, Skip, Skip caused this. He's the one that caused the divorce. He's the one that had Shannon Sharp venturing and looking at other options. And looks like Shannon Sharp has done pretty doggone good for himself. So that right there, I completely disagree with Skip. That you caused this issue. You should have been a little bit more respectful towards your partner. Because that show was a partnership. Let's get that correct. The other thing is, you know, I think it's strange, Jason, how this thing just kind of went out. With the whimper and not a bang. I mean, say what you want about Skip, whether you hate him, love him, or loathe him. He's impactful. He has been very important to this genre, for better or worse. And to just kind of say, okay, uh, see you whenever, with no celebration, with no tributes, nothing. It, it kind of reminds me of these boxing careers where, like, even the great Ray Robinson kind of wound down. Um, in Tijuana, losing to fighters that he never would have used as sparring partners. It just seems kind of underwhelming. But, Jason, we spoke about this last year when they tried to revive this show with a cast of thousands. He was left as an outsider on his own show. I think they added too many people. I think they should have kept it very simple. Less would have been more. All you really needed was Michael Irvin and maybe another guy. You didn't need all those other people and I lost interest in that show when it didn't have the playmaker on. And I saw segments where he's just a guy sitting out in right field doing nothing for 20 minutes at a time. It didn't even feel like his own show. But I go back to what I said. Um, this was something that he caused because of the way he treated his partner. And do I think his television career is over? In terms of being with a major traditional broadcast network, yes. But as we've seen, traditional media now is taking a backseat to independent media. But as you've seen by his YouTube numbers, that may not be his core audience. Yeah, listen, you said is impactful. I would say was impactful. Okay. And I would That's say fair. that his impact was, hey, I'm at ESPN. And virtually anybody that's on ESPN during that time frame was impactful, particularly back when it wasn't for any and everybody. When before Mina Kimes, before Sarah Spain, before Pablo Torre and Bomani Jones and just any and yeah. everybody, regardless of game. level of accomplishment. Right. Yeah, but, but it, it's just like there used to be like, oh, well, Tony Kornheiser and Mike Wilbon. They were such accomplished journalists that they're on ESPN's platform, blah, blah, blah. Skip Bayless, early adopter. And it's like, it said something significant about it. He's so good and so impactful. He's on ESPN. Next thing you know, every Tom, Dick, and Harry is on ESPN. <laughs> and, oh, this person has a blog. Or this person once wrote an article for some organization we have no idea Blah, blah, is now on ESPN, they're just blah, 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 blah. And so once that got diluted, and now people are having to stand on their own two feet. So to me, Skip struck while the fire was hot, and he rode that wave uh, from being an early adopter and someone that got identified early, but Skip has never been a skilled or talented or even likable broadcaster or anyone that's really all that provocative beyond the fact his willingness to uh, take on uh, LeBron James, someone who got identified as, hey, don't criticize this person. And he took him on at a time when uh, LeBron was actually far easier to defend than he is now. 
so you heard what they had to say there look um i think steve kim summed it up perfectly he said instead of sitting there and being upset for the network not going out there and try to broker peace between himself and shannon sharp <clears throat> why didn't you do a better job at treating your partner better why didn't you respect him more why didn't you value him a little bit more i think these are all sound and salient points that he makes right and i think that's one of the reason people don't feel look <clears throat> a lot of people don't feel bad for skip for a bunch of reasons let's go through some of them number one a lot of people don't like the fact that skip trolled lebron for his entire career now is it okay to have uh you know um, a harsh critique on a particular player yes there's nothing wrong with that but once people kind of see that that's kind that that's kind of like your, your 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 daily thing that you're doing you now come off as a hack like this is the only thing that you're doing on a daily basis and people then begin to feel like okay you're only doing this to gain attention and get views and <clears throat> ratings etc 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 number one number two people didn't like the fact that whenever things would go wrong in a debate skip <clears throat> has a history of disrespecting people on television yesterday we tried to point out the gentleman that he disrespected a former nfl coach but i forgot his name but then some of our viewers pointed it out to me it was eric mangini eric mangini you go back in the internet and search skip bayless and eric, eric i think eric mangini on youtube and you will see how Skip Bayless totally disrespected that man on live television on first take. You go see it. You just go look and see it. Go look at how he was talking to Chris Bosh, calling him Bosh Spice. <clears throat> go look at the back and forth that he had with Chris Carter. Go look at the back and forth that he had with Shannon Sharp just a year or so, a year or two ago. Skip has a history of this. And when people see this, they don't like it. They don't like it. So... When we hear the news that Skip refused to give a farewell speech because he didn't like how Fox handled the situation between himself and Shannon Sharp, well, the question becomes, who, who's, who's at the root cause of all of this? Because if you leave it to me to interpret it, I don't think Shannon was the issue at all in terms of their relationship being fractured. I genuinely believe, I, and that's how it looked outwardly to me, I genuinely believe that Shannon Sharp wanted to be at fs1 i think he was uh, uh grateful for the position that he was in and i think he would have done whatever it took to make it work but shannon is a human being like the rest of us and we all have our breaking points and when you're constantly being disrespected on television by your partner after a while you're going to reach your breaking point shannon never said those things to skip skip did skip said it to shannon so that's the reason why people don't feel sympathetic towards Skip. This is the reason why they don't feel any sympathy whatsoever. And to me, it is very telling because a lot of these comments are coming from people that used to be his contemporaries. That's the surprising part. Now, does all of these comments change the impact that Skip Bayless had on sports media? No, it doesn't. Like Skip Bayless or hate Skip Bayless, he played a serious role in the way we view sports media it's just the fact as they say he is the godfather of debate that is 100 percent true he is and no one can take that away from him no one can take away the fact that he extended an olive branch to stephen a smith when stephen a smith was on the outs with espn and brought him back into the fold no one can dispute that no one can dispute this skip bayless went to bat for shannon sharp before the uh, Undisputed started when the network wanted him to go with another journalist. And he said, no, I want Shannon to be the guy. I want Shannon to be the guy. And they selected Shannon. No one is going to take away the fact that Skip Bayless was the one that gave the idea to Shannon Sharp to start his own podcast. Shannon Sharp said this on All the Smoke. He said it himself. No one has taken away all of those things. We, we, we're going to get, we, we, we salute you when it comes to those things. But all these other things that people are talking about, they are 100% on the money. You know, and for Skip to refuse to have a farewell speech just makes him come off as being looking bitter and all of that. How can you blame? Yes, can Fox have played a role? Yes, but ultimately, you could have done a better job. If you had gone up to the guy and apologized to him and said, hey, listen, Shannon looks like someone that would, have, that would have been receptive to those apologies. This is how I, this is how I'm seeing Shannon Sharp from afar. Shannon Sharp looks like if someone, if you show him some genuine contrition and you say, I'm sorry, 
he looks like someone that will that will apply because Shannon always said he was willing to make it work. He would always say, "You don't throw away an eight year relationship or whatever it is, or a seven six year relationship for a few bad months." He always said this. Does that sound like somebody that wouldn't be accept that would that wouldn't be open to hearing hearing you apologize if you if you if you if you sincerely mean it? So to me, look, um, Skip, uh, he's made his mark for better or for worse. Uh, again, to me, what it's telling, however, is how people that are contemporaries are speaking about him. It says a lot. It really, really does. These are my thoughts. Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. We catch you guys on the next show. Peace.